This submarine is what experts are calling the future of underwater defence. It's a nuclear-powered attack sub that combines next-gen UK design with classified US technology. And it's being built in Australia, where it'll be deployed in the 2040s. The US doesn't usually share this type of technology with its allies, so the fact that Australia is getting it is a massive deal. But the future subs, which are estimated to cost up to $250 billion, have been criticised by China and Russia, who say the vessels risk sparking a nuclear arms race in the Indo-Pacific. So here's the secret US technology that will enhance these subs, and how it might be used to counter China's growing influence. The SSN AUKUS is being built with one key feature in mind, interoperability. That's the ability for all three nations to integrate the same technology, weapons, and nuclear reactors into their subs. To do this, the US will share its highly classified nuclear submarine technology, making the UK and Australia the only two nations to ever publicly receive these systems. Australia will also become the seventh country in the world to own these vessels, which have greater capabilities than their current diesel-electric submarines. They can go farther, um, they can generally go faster, and they're, they're quieter as well. So there's a big uh, capability advantage in a maritime environment. Naval experts say the submarine's design will likely feature a larger hull than Australia's current submarines, housing almost twice as many crew members. That crew will operate US combat control systems, which detect the submarine's surroundings and direct its weapons to their targets. Alongside US torpedoes, those weapons will include missiles fired from vertical launch systems. Experts say these multi-purpose silos will be similar to the modules used in US Virginia-class submarines, allowing all three nations to use the same US Tomahawk and hypersonic missiles. Strapping an American missile into an Australian submarine and having it work absolutely seamlessly would be a great advantage uh, in any military conflict. All of these weapons will be conventional, as Australia doesn't have nuclear weapons. That means building the nuclear reactors needed to power these subs on its own shores could violate the 1968 Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The treaty limits the transfer and use of highly enriched uranium to non-nuclear weapons states. So Australia will use what critics have called a loophole for the first time in the treaty's history. The power units will instead be built in the UK by Rolls-Royce and enhanced with US technology to make them safer and quieter. They'll then be completely sealed before being shipped to Australia. This arrangement has sparked concerns from campaigners who want to stop the spread of nuclear weapons and drawn criticism from China and Russia. China has said this could lead to an arms race in the region. Um, obviously, the US and Australia deny uh, those claims, but Russia and China do not like this deal at all. That's because of tensions in the Indo-Pacific, where the AUKUS alliance says these subs will be deployed. Experts say choke points, including the Sunda Strait and Taiwan Strait, as well as the South China Sea, are the primary zones of interest for these subs. The way that the U.S. is seeking to counter China in the region is that they're trying to build up the capabilities of their allies. And this is one of the ways that the U.S. is doing that. But critics say that all this advanced technology could be obsolete by the time the SSN AUKUS is actually deployed. Experts have pointed to the rapid development of UUVs, or unmanned underwater vehicles, as both a challenge to the importance of submarines and an opportunity for their continued relevance. You might have one manned submarine sort of controlling a fleet of underwater drones, but when you're looking at such a big time frame, 20 years in the future, it's unclear um, how much of a need there, there will be. That uncertainty, and the significant price tag attached to these vessels, has raised the eyebrows of critics. But experts say the high cost shows how important a stronger presence in the Indo-Pacific is for the AUKUS alliance. There is a growing recognition that the U.S. cannot do this alone. China's been pouring a lot of money and time into its military buildup. And to uh, keep pace with China, the U.S. is going to have to seek uh, help from its allies. And Australia really is one of its biggest allies in the region. <laughs>